cartoon recaps here, today I will be recapping the continuation of the animation series called Soul Land. Spoilers ahead, relax and enjoy. This episode begins as we see Tang San, having a conversation concerning his soul powers with his master. After his master had explained everything he needed to know, he tells Tang San to get himself ready, so that they will go on a journey to find the beast's soul. When Xiao Wu hears the news that Tang San is leaving, it really disappointed her, but Tang San assures her that he is only living temporarily with his master, to find something really important. It also makes a deal with her to do most of the chores in the school when he returns. As they were about to depart, Xiao Wu appeals to have one more combat with him, before he embarks on his journey. The moment he agrees, Xiao Wu started to strike him. As she was about to land a punch on him, he dodges it and confidently tells her that he now knows a way of defeating her. As Xiao Wu repeatedly tries to attack him, she wasn't even able to land a blow, which surprises her, because Tang San has already mastered all her secret moves and skills. The next morning we see Tang San in a carriage with his master, as they are already on a journey to find a beast's soul. His master explains to him that the beast's soul is divided into five various levels, which are called the Decade Soul Beast, Century Soul Beast, Millennium Soul Beast, Decade Millennium Soul Beast, and Century Millennium Soul Beast. Each of them is specified in different colors which are red, yellow, white, purple, and black. The Soul Beasts are found in the forest on the northern side of the city called, the Guiding City. However, it's only the Decade or the Century Soul Beast that can be found in that place. He also gives him a belt, that has the proficiency to store every one of his soul guiding tools. When they both of them arrived at their destination, it all seemed strange and unusual, because the whole place was so noisy and busy, making his master explain to him that these people are soul haunting team, that are trying to make money by hunting soul beasts. His master tells him that soul beasts are usually powerful, so a team that is usually formed temporarily to kill soul beasts can't be considered a real team. But a true team for hunting down a soul beast must consist of five outstanding kinds of people, which includes a food branch tool soul master, who is in charge of replenishment. A healing branch tool soul master, that is responsible for soul recovery. An agility branch soul master, that is responsible for investigations. Strength branch war soul master, who is responsible for defense. And finally, the attack branch war soul master, who is responsible for killing an opponent. A team with all these abilities is considered a complete and real team, for hunting down the soul beast. Tang San and his master suddenly arrive at the gates of the forest where soul beasts can be hunted. But unfortunately, the guards who are patrolling around won't let anyone pass. Only if the soul master has a token, that is administered from the martial soul hall. Suddenly his master forges a token that Tang San can use to enter the forest, and explains to him how it works. Tang San then curiously asks his master if the beast's soul is stronger than the weapon's soul. But his master explains to him that the powers of a martial spirit are considered by the characteristics of either additional soul powers, or acquired soul training, and clears out to him that real strength only depends on individual cultivation. Immediately, Tang San and his master were successfully able to enter the soul hunting forest. There were lots of strange sounds from the forest, prompting his master on advising him to always stay by his side. We see a pack of purple hair soul beasts that is about to attack them, and that was how this episode ended. The next episode begins as we see Tang San and his master who are still strolling around the forest. After a long walk, they decided to take a rest since it was dawn. But they notice a pack of 10 ranked wolf approaching them. Immediately, his master unleashes a technique that releases a unique kind of energy that was able to subdue the pack of wolves in one shot. But just when we thought it was all over, the problem was only getting started, as we see a really large snake emerging from the forest. Tang San master was really surprised, because he thought this kind of poisonous snake was extinct a long time ago, and warns Tang San to be careful, because of the snake paralyzing effect, and also its ability to damage the nerves. This is one of the most powerful, among all the soul beasts. His master believes he doesn't have the capability to fight the snake, so he believes it would be more safer and wiser for them to make their escape. But suddenly, Tang San turns around, and summons a secret weapon out of himself, and aims it directly at the snake's eye. But unfortunately, the serpent dodges his shot. Tang San goes on a really tough fight with this gigantic snake, and luckily for him, he was able to bring out a knife in time, and uses it to purse the snake in its weak area, subduing it at once. Eventually his master instructs him to use the blue silver plant, to absolve the soul ring from the snake. After a long process, Tang was successfully able to absolve the soul ring from the serpent, making him so extremely excited. But something strange happens, as he sees his master on the ground in pain. 
as Tang San hurries to know what might be wrong with his master, he notices a mark in his body, and realizes that his master was bitten by the giant snake. And that was how this episode ended. Next episode begins as we see Tang San taking out a knife and creates an opening, as he plans to remove all the poison out of his master's body. Few moments later, his master finally gained consciousness, and asked Tang San if he successfully absolved the snake soul ring. Tang San said yes, and also shows his master approve on the new power he acquired, making his master so proud. Now their mission is complete, Tang San and his master then heads forward in returning to the academy. After they both return back to the school, Tang San advises his master to just take a rest for a while, because all the poison hasn't fully left his body, while he continues with his school activities. On the other hand, we see Xiao Wu with her hostile followers, confronting the boss of the upper-class hostel called, Xiao. Since the both opposing groups are ten in number, Xiao suggested to Xiao Wu that they should fight one by one, until every member of the group is defeated. The boss from the other team suddenly brings out a challenger. Xiao Wu was about to fight on behalf of her group, but a member in her group called Wang Sheng begs her to fight instead since she's the leader. Wang Sheng has a soul beast while the challenger for the other group has a soul weapon. As the both of them started engaging in a combat, we see them using their powers against each other, but the challenger gains the upper hand of fight, as he keeps landing a blow on Wang Sheng by using his soul weapon. Just as the fight between the both groups was getting tensed, that was when Tang San arrives, making Xiao Wu so excited, because he is the strongest member in her team. As Tang San sees Wang Sheng was already getting defeated in the fight, he throws a magical stone at the opponent, which gives Wang Sheng the advantage to finally land a blow, and after few punches, Wang Sheng wins the match, as he knocks out the opposing team member to unconsciousness. This makes the boss of the upper class group more furious, and sends the strongest challenger in his group to fight them. This time around, Tang San volunteers to fight on behalf of the group. As the second challenger runs toward Tang San in speed, he defeated him so easily, making the boss of the upper class group so shocked, because that was the most powerful member in his group, but Tang San only defeated him in seconds. Angrily, the upper class boss suddenly decided to fight Tang San all by himself. But as Tang San started to display all the powers inside of him, the upper class boss holds back, as he realizes that Tang San has a hundred year soul ring. Out of fear, he decided to accept his defeat to Tang San. Now the boss of the upper class group has no choice but to complete his agreement, by accepting Xiao Wu as the boss, which will now make Xiao Wu in charge of the whole school. Few moments later, we see Tang San strolling through the city, as he was heading to the Seoul Marshal Hall. The guards at the entrance of the hall allows him to pass, when they found out that he was there to examine his martial soul. And that was how this episode ended. Thank you for watching guys. I will be recapping more episodes soon. You don't want to miss out. Please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.